Right. <laughs> Figuring the Orion I.O. as just a standalone uh, I.O. module, and by that I mean <laughs> you're not connecting an Orion LX or an LX Mini in the cascade mode. This is just as a standalone Orion. First thing we're going to do is file and uh, new Orion I.O. If it has the advanced user interface, be sure and check that box. And that's the, uh, the little um, uh, enunciator screen. Uh, we do have the standard version. If that's the case, uncheck the advanced user interface. Click OK. And once we load up all the protocols configured, Orion file number one, you can obviously rename that, but uh, the first thing we're going to do is drop down to hardware I.O. and we want to configure the I.O. cards. Um, what's important here is to know how your uh, cards are laid out in your Orion I.O. module. And you can do that simply by pushing the display button and it will tell you how the cards are populated. So in this example here, card A is 16 digital inputs, card B 16 digital inputs, card C 16 digital outputs, card D 8 analogs. And if you have a wetted card, it will define wetted. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go in and uh, add a new card. And so based upon our configuration, we're going to select which card is in slot A first. Click on accept and update this card yes. Here we define whether we're using a high or low voltage input to apply the uh, wetting voltage. Low would be 48 volts, high would be 125 volts. And once we've done that, now we could give card A a specific name if we wanted to, but I think most people leave it as uh, card A. Uh, the next thing we do is click on inputs, and so these are the binary inputs and the binary input counters. And so you just basically select the 16 inputs, map them over, and those then become the inputs um, that uh, are available for that particular card. Here you have the option of naming the caption. And I like to just name the caption and leave the Orion point name al alone, but you certainly could rename this and it will carry over to here. Uh, so, for example, um, Breaker uh, 12352A. Uh, and click on the next one, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we've also provided a little GUI interface. So you, once you've named everything, you can go through and push the little buttons as if you were in front of the device to make sure you've got spelling correct. Uh, and this, this can have two lines of information, so maybe you want to make sure that uh, you know the uh, spacing is proper. So that's what the little GUI is for, and it applies to all the cards. So once we're happy that we're done with card A, we go add the next card, and we select if we have a wetted type, we'll click on accept, update this card, yes. Now we're on card B. And on the wetted card, we have two options for wetting voltage. The card actually has a 24 volt and a 48 volt DC power supply built onto it. So if you select high, you're using the 48. If you select low, you're using the 24 volts. Um, once I've done that, click on accept. And I just follow the same routine. Click on inputs, map over the inputs, and change my caption that I want displayed on the advanced display when I push the button when that point is search. Uh, add a new card. Let's say we have a uh, typo digital output. Click on accept. Update this card, yes. And here you're going to configure the outputs. Now, if you're using trip close pair, you're going to map over every other output. And that will allow you to define trip close pairs and 
The rest of these then can be mapped over if you're going to use pulse for pulse, latch, etc. Okay. Um, and this is where you would change the caption on the display itself. So if you wanted to go in and give that some unique display, uh, you can certainly do that. And then the last card we would add is our analog card. And on the analog card, what you want to know is um, how the point is wired. And what I mean by that is on the label on the chassis, you'll see that there is a schematic for the analog input. So where we land the wire defines what input we use. So the first one is 10 to 10, and then I think, I think the second terminal is 0 to 1, and then 4 to 20, and then ground, and then we start all over again, 10 to 10, 0 to 1, 4 to 20, ground. And that's how we come up with eight analogs per card. So once I know how my termination is set up, then I can go in and click on my inputs, map over my analog points, uh, change my caption that I want here, low pressure gas, SF6, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm going to select how I've wired up my inputs here, all right? Um, once I'm done there, then I go back to configure Orion file. Now I'm either going to use a serial port or a network port to set up my DNP slave point. All right, so now I'm just gonna go in and define what, um, what my ports are, my typical DNP slave information, um, default variations, et cetera, et cetera. Click on add URTU. You know, you can call this with IO sub X or what have you. Whatever the DNP address is, et cetera, et cetera. Click on accept, update, yes. And now, Here's my points list for all of the cards that I've configured. So notice you get all of this information that you get with a typical Orion RTU. But we also get a com fail bit for each one of the cards. And not everybody likes to map that over, but you certainly can if you want. Grab all the points, map them over. And if you choose not to do com fails, just map those back. All right, and so from here, it's your standard DMP points. You can go in and change the class. You can change the dead band for your analogs, min, max, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can sort by binaries. You can sort by analogs, counters, pros and counters, et cetera. And so once I'm done with this, then I certainly have the ability to transfer the file um, after I've saved it. Uh, I can use the standard uh, terminal interface through the communications option, go into my either serial port or a network connection, or you can use the web interface once you find your IP addresses for your Ethernet ports, and then you just use the file uh, drop-down menu, select the NCD file that you've stored on your uh, desktop somewhere, and just transfer, and then make the uh, NCD file active um, that way. Uh, hope that helps. Thanks.